If you watched the last video, we studied through Psalm 19, specifically the first six verses of Psalm 19. And if you haven't watched that video, I hope you go back and do so. And I would encourage you to do so before moving on to the verses we're going to study today. And I'll leave a link down in the description so you can go ahead and watch that. But in the first six verses of Psalm 19, it's encouraging us to look at the world surrounding us for evidence of God's creation. And so when we look at the heavens and we look at the sky and we look at nature surrounding us, God has not left us without a witness of who he is. And that's what the first six verses are speaking to is the evidence that God has left of who he is as the creator of the universe. And it's telling us that we need to look up well, these next verses, verses 7 through 11, is not telling us to look up, but it's actually telling us to look down, specifically to look down at the Word of God. It says here in verses 7 through 11, The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. So the word law here in, in verse 7 is not in terms of the Ten Commandments or even of legislation. Um, the word that is used here is Torah. And it's a term used for the will of God. And, of course, that is revealed through the Word of God, His instructions, His instructions that have the power to convert and revive souls. So the Word of God changes and saves the heart. It, the Word of God, as we study, hopefully we're studying, is changing who we are. It's changing the way we interact with one another. It's changing our goals. It's changing us from the inside out. It's changing who we are. So in the same way that the sun provides for us physically, as expressed in the first video, the Word of God provides for us spiritually. Peter says in 1 Peter 1.23, it says, For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living Word of God. And of course, we know Hebrews 4.12 says that the Word of God is actually living and that it's active and it's able to pierce our hearts and judge our thoughts and intentions. So the Word of God is active and alive. It's able to do things. It's able to change us. The Word of God has a purpose in our lives. For those who like to diagram things out, I think it really paints a picture when you take the adjectives and write them out in these verses here, verses 7 through 11. And you see the Word of God affirmed for us in a very important and clear way. So if we scan the adjectives, and I encourage you, if you have a piece of paper, just go ahead and write them out as we go. It first says that the law of the Lord is perfect. And then it says it is the sure testimony of the Lord. It says the precepts of the Lord are right. The commandments of the Lord are pure. And the fear of the Lord is clean. And the rules are true. So just in case you missed that, the adjectives are perfect, sure, 
right, pure, clean, and true. And what we have here is a succession of words that are combining into one great truth. You know, when it says that the law of the Lord is perfect, this is the same word that's used as an example in Romans 12, 12, where it says the will of God is perfect. So David is confirming that the will of God or the way of God is perfect. And then it says that the testimony is sure. And this is talking about the surety is confirming the word of God. And then it says the precepts of the word are right. And the word there that is used for right does not distinguish between left or right or even right or wrong. But it has to do with morality. It's making a point that the way God has established his world and his creation is within the framework of moral cleanliness. There's no deficiency found in the way that God has created his world. And then the remainder of the words are simply pure, clean, and true. And for time's sake, I'm not going to go into these words because we could dwell on these for a while. But the point we need to make sure that we understand is when you take these words and you set them against the background of our world, of our society today, then we set them in a context that illuminates them with a dark background, if that makes sense. These words stand out in society, in the culture that we live in. A culture that we live in, that, that deals with half-truths, that's talking about fake news all the time, a, a culture that's embracing compromise at every turn. And so to be confronted with words like perfect and sure and clean and right and true is to immediately realize that the Word of God shines in the world that we live in today. And we need to understand that. The darker that this world becomes, the more falsehood that is evident in the world that we live in. The more Christians, the more the word of God shines. So, if you've written down these adjectives, I want to talk about what these adjectives describe. Well, they describe the law of the Lord, the testimony of the Lord, the precepts of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, the commandments of the Lord, and the rules of the Lord. And what do they do? We, have, we now have the adjectives. We have what they describe. I mean, you just have to go through these verses and match up the adjectives with what they describe, and then what they do. They revive the soul. They make wise the simple. They rejoice the heart. They enlighten the eyes. They endure forever, and they warn the servants. Like I said, when you place these things over the backdrop, of the world we live in. A world that is being affected by COVID-19. A world that is going through political chaos and social chaos. And you confront the world with words like perfect and sure and right and pure these things are hard to find and clean and true. We don't find these things in the world that we live in today. It's hard to find cleanliness. It's hard to find things that are true. It's hard to find things that are perfect and sure, things that are right, things that are pure. But when we look at the Word of God, 
the law of the Lord, the testimony of the Lord, the precepts of the Lord, the commandments of the Lord, when we look at these things, these things are evident. So we need to cling to these things, not get distracted by the world around us and everything that's going on and focus on the word of God during these times because these are the things that are perfect and true and right. I hope this brings some encouragement today. That's really the goal is to encourage people and to encourage people to look at this psalm a little bit more deeply and to look at the word of God more deeply in general. And I hope I've done that.